Hello, this is David Diga Hernandez, and you're watching Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. If you've ever doubted that you have a purpose, I want to remind you of this truth. God always creates with purpose. When He created you, He created you for a specific, unique, and powerful purpose. And I want to talk to you about it. But first, Stephen Moctezuma is here with me. He's going to lead you in some very anointed worship. And then we're getting right into this message. Here's Steve. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear for I child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear, for I am a child of You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and say, I am a child of God. split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and say, I am a child of God. I So this message is going to greatly benefit those who are in ministry and want to become more effective in their ministry. And this is also for those who want to be used by God. There are keys to effectiveness in ministry. And one of those keys is finding your specific purpose. Now you may say, well, I don't know if I have a specific purpose or I don't know if there's anything unique about me or I don't think God really planned anything special for my life. I'm going to show you that that's not the case. And biblically speaking, that you have been given a role to fulfill that God has designed specifically for you. I'm going to show you that that's the truth. And then I'm going to show you what I do in ministry to focus in on what God has given me to do. 
I want to start with this quote. In order to become dynamic, you must first become specific. What does that mean? In order to become dynamic, you must first become specific. That means that if you want to truly be effective, if you want to see true growth in the ministry God has given to you, if you want to see true growth in the future ministry that you will one day have, it's important that you learn the power of focus. Focus comes when you know your purpose. God has given you a purpose. God has given you a problem to fix. God has designed you uniquely to reach a certain people, a certain culture, a certain nation. There are people that you could reach that I could never really reach. There are people that I could reach that others wouldn't be able to reach. And God has done it in this way because God has set a purpose for each and every one of us. Think about the creation account in the book of Genesis. God separates light from darkness. Why? Because they serve two different purposes. God separates the waters from the land. Why? Because they each serve different purposes. God creates the birds, their purpose to fly. God creates the fish, their purpose to swim. God creates man, his purpose to rule. God has created you with a purpose. So it's easy to accept this in a general sense. We know that God has called us all to do certain things, but then the frustration comes when we don't know what to do specifically. So let's set a foundation here first. I want to show you a few things that every believer is called to do no matter what. Every single one of us should be doing these things. And this by no means is an exhaustive list. This is not every task that all believers have been given. These are just some of the ones that I see as the main ones. So number one, you're called to live holy. That's every believer. 1 Peter 1.16. For the scriptures say you must be holy because I am holy. Every single one of us are called to evangelize. Mark 16, 15 says, and then he told them, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. Consider John 4, 24. For God is spirit, so those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Only believers can truly worship because only believers have spirit and truth. Therefore, every believer is called to worship. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 simply says, Never stop praying. Every believer is called to pray. You have to have a prayer life if you want to be used by God. We're all called to know God's word. Colossians 3.16 says, Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. We're also all called to demonstrate love. Luke 10, 27 says, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Love is one of the hallmarks of a true believer. They love God and they love people. All of us are called to demonstrate love. All of us are called, believe it or not, to serve in a church. 1 Peter 4, 10 says, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Another, we're all called to serve in the church. How are we supposed to use our spiritual gifts to help one another if we're never together? We must serve in the church. So we're all called to live holy. We are all called to evangelize. We're all called to worship, pray, know God's word, demonstrate love, serve in the church. All of these things are for all believers. So then, has God truly given us specific tasks aside from these general commands that have universal application for all believers? Yes. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ so we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. In other words, His plans were for us to do certain good works, and He planned this long ago. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous, how well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. 
And when I wake up, you are still with me. Think about the fact that God's thoughts toward you can't even be numbered. God's thoughts toward each and every believer cannot be numbered. And if God's thoughts toward each and every believer cannot be numbered, surely there are certain thoughts that are unique to certain believers. And if those thoughts are unique, it means there are different ways that God communicates with that believer. And there are different purposes that God has assigned that believer to. So in principle, all of us have calls that are unique. In principle, we see that God assigns different tasks to different people. In fact, Ephesians 4, 11 through 12 says this, And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now you may say, what if I'm not one of those? What if I'm not a pastor, a teacher, a prophet, evangelist, or an apostle? Well, again, the takeaway principle here is that God has in fact selected certain things for certain people for unique situations. And the truth of the matter is that we're all a unique part of the body of Christ. Just because you're not one of the fivefold ministry doesn't mean that you're not a unique and needed part of the body. 1 Corinthians 12, 12 to 14 says this, The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles. Some are slaves and some are free. But we have all been baptized into one body by one spirit, and we all share the same spirit. Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. So right there, very specifically, the scripture teaches that each one of us serves a different purpose. Not only do we have different spiritual gifts, we have different spiritual gift sets. We have different personalities. We have different ways of influencing people. We have different levels of resources. We have different talents. We have different connections. We all are different from different parts of the world. God has positioned us. God has purposed us to fulfill certain mandates. So in order to become dynamic, you must become specific. That's a biblical principle. Focus and focusing on a certain area really brings power to your ministry. Think about the fact that very rarely are doctors in general requested. If I go to for a general checkup, I can just go to the doctor. But if I have a specific problem with a specific part of my body, like my eye or my ear, then I want to go to specific doctors who specialize with those specific problems. My point is that no one ever really calls on a general doctor. They always call on the specialists. And so I want to show you how to become a specialist in ministry so that when you put your specific gift sets to use, when you put everything that God has placed in you that is unique to use, you become dynamic in ministry. You become effective. People begin to call upon you for certain things. So taking my ministry as an example, please don't take this as me bragging. This is just me sharing how I process what God has given me to do. And in fact, God has given you something as well. So I don't want to come across at all like I'm, like, like I'm saying, look how great this ministry is or anything like that. I'm just sharing with you my assignment because I know what God has assigned me to do. So, of course, as I said, we're all called to preach the gospel. That goes without saying. Every single one of us are called to preach the gospel. But consider this. If you go through the epistles, you'll find that different writers addressed different topics in the Bible. You read the Old Testament prophets, though they were all trying to reconcile or warn Israel, they had different angles, they had different stories, they had different means of prophesying, they saw different visions, they had different personalities. So they, though they were all trying to accomplish one purpose, they did it in different ways. Though every prophet in general had a message of warning or a message of reconciliation, either way, each prophet had a unique flair on their message. So in the same way, God has given you a unique flair on your message. Some preachers shout and get people excited. Some people have a more conversational tone and make people think. Some people are gifted in music. Some people are gifted in speaking. Some people are gifted in art. Some people are gifted in technology. There are different types of gifts. There are different types of personalities. There are different types of purposes. So here's how I process this. 
These are the four M's I want to give you. The message, the method, the means, the motivation. So as I said, I'm making it very clear, every believer is called to preach the gospel. That should, should be noted, okay? So in no way am I saying that some are called to preach the gospel, some are not. All of us are called to share the message of salvation. However, God has given to each of us in ministry, I believe, specific areas of focus and grace. So when you think of this ministry, when, when people say David Diga Hernandez, they think of teachings on the Holy Spirit, teachings on prayer, teachings sometimes maybe on spiritual warfare, on faith, on miracles. These are the topics and the themes that God has given to me to share with the body of Christ. In fact, when he called me, one of the things I believe he told me, I've called you to introduce my Holy Spirit to your generation. So again, the Holy Spirit, prayer, spiritual warfare, healing, evangelism, miracles, these are my areas of specific grace as far as my teaching gift goes. So God's going to anoint you with a specific message. There are some people I've talked to, God has anointed them with a message to contradict or to counteract or to combat sex trafficking or to combat uh, certain issues. There are some ministries I know they help people with pornography. I think of some ministries that help people in their finances. There are some ministries that help people build their families, build their marriages. All of these things are needed and we shouldn't be so judgmental as to say, well, they're not preaching salvation, therefore they're not preaching the gospel. We must keep in mind that we all preach the gospel, but that God has in fact given us certain areas of grace. So my encouragement to you, find your message. What has God given you to say? What is God from His Word giving you to say? Two, find your method. How will you carry that out? So for me, it's salvation, the Holy Spirit, healing, prayer, basically messages of the supernatural and the gospel through the means of events and media. But maybe your method will be different. Maybe it's more specific on media. Maybe it's not video. Maybe it's podcast. Maybe it's writing. Maybe it's events. Maybe it's having dinners with people. Maybe it's in a community Bible study. There are different methods of carrying out the message. Then there are different means of resourcing the message. So the resources you'll use to carry out the method are just as important. These are your time, your finances, your influence, your voice, your personality. For, for us here at the ministry, it's partnership. We have the three incomes, we call it the three Ps. It's partnership, preaching, and product. So for our ministry, it's monthly partners. And then when I go preach, sometimes ministries will give an offering to our ministry. And then there's product like the books and the things that we have online, the different pieces of apparel that people can get. All of that goes to fund the advancement of the message through the method of events and media. And then you got to find your motivation. Find a need and fill it. Which specific problem can you solve? For me, it's soul winning and helping people come to understand spiritual truths. I want to take the complicated spiritual realities and the way that people complicate those spiritual realities, and I want to give it to people in simple truths that they can apply to their lives immediately. So in order to become dynamic, you must first become specific. That's a biblical principle. We see it in the creation account. We see it written in the epistles. We see it in the book of Psalms. In order to do this, find your message, Find your method, find your means, find your motivation. Solve that problem. You do these things, you learn to focus, and I believe that your ministry, the ministry that God will give to you or the ministry that maybe is in development now, I believe that ministry will be more effective because of the truth from the Word of God. Well, that's it for the lesson. I want to pray for you now. I want to pray that God would help you to apply this uniquely to your situation. Father, in Jesus' name, I lift that one to you now who desires a good thing. Lord, I pray for that one in ministry. I pray for that one starting in ministry. I pray for that one with the desire to be used by you. And I ask you, Lord, to allow this wisdom from your Holy Spirit and your word to take root deep within their hearts. I give you the praise for what you're going to do with their lives. We honor and we bless you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. I want you to say it because you believe it. Say Amen. Well, I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you. We are praying for you. I always say that because I always mean it. If you'd like to join our online church, 
Just go to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch. And now for the comments. These comments come from my teaching, Holy Spirit, Dove of New Beginnings. If you haven't watched this one, I encourage you to do so, especially if you're in a season where you're saying, God, I need a fresh start. I need a new beginning. I need to get out of this season and into the next. I encourage you to go watch Holy Spirit, Dove of New Beginnings. While you're at it, be sure to connect with us on whatever platform you're watching on. If you're following us where you can follow, make sure you click follow. If you're watching us where you can subscribe, make sure you subscribe. And by the way, when you subscribe on YouTube, be sure to click the notification bell so that you can get all of the notifications when we release new content. So again, these comments come from Holy Spirit Dove of New Beginnings. If you'd like me to potentially read your comment on a future episode of Spirit Church, then make sure you're commenting across our channel. Carl Hans Japet Carranzo writes, such a powerful and wonderful message, to God be the glory. Teacher Carla says, thank you, Pastor David, for a very powerful message. May God bless you and your team. Nally Meeks, I was so blessed by this message. It was very timely for me. Thank you for your obedience to the Holy Spirit. This ministry was such a blessing to me. I am learning so much from you, your teachings, and your books. Glory be to God. Well, Nally, indeed, all glory belongs to Jesus. Living for Heaven writes, Thank you, Brother David, for this fresh, anointed message from heaven. I've messed up in my life. However, this message changed me. And I'm starting a new beginning with the Holy Spirit. God bless you, the DHM team, and your families. Well, that's awesome. I love to hear about lives being transformed. And finally, John Rev Alores writes, Thank you, Pastor David, for this message. Your teachings inspire me to grow deeper in my faith and to know more about the Holy Spirit. God bless you and your team. Well, I want to talk to you for a moment, so don't turn the video off. If you're watching this and you're someone who's in ministry, who's starting in ministry, or who one day wants to be used by God, I want to give you an opportunity to be a part of what we're doing here. You know, everything you see, the media that we release, the live streams that we do, the events that we host around the world, the Holy Spirit School, where we train believers and teach them the practicalities of ministry and of growth in the Word, all of those things. All of that is funded by partner support. And I want to invite you to become a part of this ministry through monthly support. Now, what you do for others, God will do for you. And if you're in ministry right now, you're saying, Lord, I want you to bless the ministry. Lord, I want you to help it grow. Or Lord, I want you to use my life one day then this is a good start. When you are a blessing to other ministries, when you are a blessing to other organizations, God takes note of that. And I believe God will see what you give to this ministry and He will bring supporters to you. If you sow as a supporter, I believe God's going to attract supporters to your ministry as well. This ministry is experiencing explosive growth and great favor, and it's good soil to sow into and I want to invite you to do that today. So become a partner with us for $10 or more a month. At the $10 level, you're going to get a beautiful Dove lapel pin that you can wear to show your support of the gospel. You're going to get 10% off all ministry apparel. You're going to get an exclusive partner update that's just for our partners by email. Of course, you're going to get access to our monthly Zoom calls where we interact with you and give you news before anyone else hears it. And, of course, you get event seat reservations at any of the ministry events that you would like to attend. At the $30 a month level, $30 or more a month, you get all of that, plus you get a book of your choice. At the $100 a month level, that's $100 or more, you're going to get all of those benefits. Your discount will double from 10% to 20%, and you get all four books from the book selection. So go to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner to become a monthly supporter, or to give a one-time gift, you can go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. Help us continue to spread the gospel all around the world in the power of the Holy Spirit through events and media. Do that today. And that is it for this edition of Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. 
make a one-time donation, or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.